question of whether we want a real internet is really the question of whether we want a real democracy. That's what Doug Rushkoff said on Saturday at the Personal Democracy Forum's conference on WikiLeaks. Real democracy comes with messy things we sometimes don't like, and one of those is getting a boatload of attention. What seems to be becoming most provocative of all, a distributed denial of service attacks on companies who've taken reprisals against WikiLeaks. Dutch police just arrested a 16-year-old boy for taking part in pro-WikiLeaks cyber attacks against MasterCard and Visa. Tech writer and activist Deanna Zant wrote of the PDF forum that there, too, so-called DDoS absorbed most of the crowd's attention. People might be afraid of giving a stamp of approval to DDoS as a political tool because it would make it okay for their political enemies to use it against them, Zant suggests. But while we debate freedom on the internet and the possibility for fighting back on the web, we often move away from the bigger point, the destabilization we should be most provoked about is the destabilizing effect of U.S. policy around the world, as revealed by the cables leaked by WikiLeaks. Covert wars in Yemen, Pakistan, the Middle East, pro-corporate intervention to scuttle climate talks. It's not just MasterCard and Visa cutting off WikiLeaks access to donations. It's the government and corporate intervention unsupervised into the freedoms and rights of people around the planet. It's sexy to talk about digital direct action, but as Deanna wrote, tech activists and political activists, especially in the U.S., bring a tremendous amount of privilege to the table. We have the ability and freedom to take risks for the benefit of those who don't have those freedoms. While we're thinking about digital action, let's not forget the reasons the WikiLeaks information is important in the first place. Those people who aren't in the room to speak for themselves.